So it's picking up pretty much straight after that last episode. If you watch that one, if not, go back and watch it. Cooking pancakes on the cliff near where we camped last night as burnt mines. We don't really know what's happening much for the next few days, so it's gonna roll with it and see what happens. Corey is gonna be max grumpy. I've just opened the canopy side where the kitchen is and it's broken. <laughs> I fell down. <laughs> what the heck? So this is me in real time trying to figure out what happened. But one of the nuts ended up coming undone, which caused the whole kitchen to fall down. It kind of got jammed down as well. That's why you can see me here not really being able to lift it up. But eventually we ended up figuring out that one of the nuts had come undone. So we're going to a cafe to get some coffee and some food. Um, so we're going there, we're going to get some stuff because we have to basically pull everything out of the back to fix up everything in the canopy. So apparently not a single place in Coffin Bay sells nuts and bolts and we just need an M8 nylock nut so we can put the kitchen back up. So we're on our way to Port Lincoln now to grab some. Now like a Bunnings and a Minor 10. We ended up heading to Port Lincoln where we grabbed some nylock nuts, managed to pry it back and then seat it back on the bolt and fixed it all up. It's called Black Springs. Coffin, Coffin, Bay. Coffin Bay National Park. So it's 5.33 and we're driving into our campsite. We didn't really read it too properly. It's a proper four wheel drive track to get in here. We just had a part that we had to drive through where it was like, caution, high tide might cause severe engine damage, which is fun. It's just rocky really. It's not too soft or anything. All right, so we're going like 2K since we last checked in, but it's just rocky as hell. So I'm gonna drop them down just a touch just to make going over the rocks a little bit less harsh on them. Yeah, maybe that is what they meant by High tide can cause engine problems because that whole track there is pretty much now a lagoon. So we got to this, that's salt water, so I'm not going through that. It looks like there's like a other way to get around at the base of those dunes. Probably should have dropped down, we're at 25 psi, but I think we should get through. Got a nice hard base at least, so that wasn't too bad actually. So I wasn't really paying attention and there was a bit of a whoopy bit back there and I slowed down too much and we just kind of sunk in this soft sand like five meters in front of us there's some rubber mats which would have helped but we didn't quite get there mm -hmm. probably could have let the tires down a little bit more but we're going to try and get out of it hopefully we only get the max traction off the road max traction is alright max is going in You know when you buy Max Tracks, they always put the leashes on them so you don't have to do the look for them. I mean, you can just kind of see them. But for a second there, I thought I was going to be digging for the next 20 minutes. Just got down to the beach and look how glassy it is. Just woken up in the morning uh, and I left some water out for these little baby kangaroos that were hopping around last night. And now I have a look at what that water bucket has turned into. So we're now just driving in after dealing with our little bee problem. I just kicked the bucket a few times gently and then the bees all went away kind of, they were swarming. Lauren, or oh, I didn't close the door, and then Lauren didn't close the door, and then the bees started coming in the car. We've driven for a while, and you would have just seen our little emu friends we made. We're now driving on this track to go to the next campsite, which is further in, because the ranger told us that no one else will be here. But the track now, for, I'm assuming seven miles, is just it. Just beach. So, had a look on maps, and there is no other tracks. This is the only way. So, we just got to gun it, and we don't get bogged. So we're just driving along the beach and we just pulled up through the drone with the emus walking in the water, which was pretty sick. I've not seen that before. Checking out our first new beach for the day. Just have to leave the car back there and walk down because you couldn't drive on this one. We just pulled up at the very end of the National Park. I can't remember what the beach is called. But we're now 40 k's into the overall track. But you guys can be the judge. Is it worth it? 
So it was a fine four-wheel drive, just rocky, not too soft, and the beach was actually pretty good to drive on. Probably go for a swim, maybe take some photos, and then go back to the campsite, pop up the paddleboard, and maybe try and catch some squid. So we've just had dinner and went for a swim, and we're trying to now do the dishes. Like the bees I showed you this morning, that was a lot. There's not that, ma that many, but they're all over us, because they're like all over our dishes. There you go, you can see them there. Yeah, you'd think they're flies, not bees. Been stung three times now. Got stung twice at once, which was hilarious. So it's now the next day. We have left the national park. Uh, definitely recommend. We woke up to our tent like they were swarming our tent because it rained overnight. But now we're just in Port Lincoln and we are trying to fix the battery system. We just need an extra solar panel. We're just like cutting it a bit low on power. Alrighty, so this is episode one of, well, trying to fix ship with nothing. Uh, we're going to put another solar panel up on the roof. Lauren's just looking at me as she's walking out. Uh, it's going to be on a hinge because the max tracks need to go under it because there's nowhere really to put them. And then we'll try to use the max tracks, screw in things to also mount the solar panel to hold it down when it's not being hinged up and down. So we've got all the solar panel plugs. So it's like quick release in case anything goes wrong when you change the solar panels or whatever. Hinges for the hinge. Uh, it came with some mounting brackets in here, which we'll probably hopefully be able to use. And the solar panel. So we've got going some bolt, oh, the brackets bolted on. We're just using the part of the awning bracket just because the bolt's already there and they had a bunch of excess sticking out. So it means I don't really have to try screw into anything. So now I'm just up here on the roof and I have it pretty much installed uh, and I'll show you. I just have to make the locking mechanism to hold it in place. But we have the hinge up. And uh, you can see there, didn't really have to drill too many holes, just in the solar panel a few, and then now I have to figure out how we're mounting it to where the max tracks mount as well. So that's another episode finished. We um, have got <laughs> the next part of our trip we're going to include in a separate video, I think, and we'll just end this one here. So thanks for watching.